<laughs> Hi guys, it's Jackie, and the music is so good, I'm really reluctant to stop it. Uh, welcome to My Flavors Europe, bringing Malaysian flavors just that little bit closer to Europe. And the way we do it is we combine Malaysian ingredients and tropical fruits with a familiar European ingredients and cooking styles to produce a uh, new taste sensation. So I'm Jackie M. I'm the founder of Masters of Malaysian Cuisine and we're doing this in partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industries of Malaysia and we're transporting ourselves virtually into kitchens all over Europe courtesy of our chefs and before I go on any further I'm just going to mute my phone sorry about this and we are going to um, bring Zaleha Olpin in the UK over to join us very very shortly but i just want to give a quick shout out a special thanks to the high commission of malaysia in the uk uh, to tourism malaysia to mar trade and to pharma for their partnership in this series and so let's uh, introduce zaleha open zaleha open is known as that rendang lady from master chef uk and she's an award-winning cookbook author. Zaleha has traveled all over the world with her expat husband. She's cultivated a love for sharing Malaysian dishes uh, with those around her. And today, she's the founder of her own range of products under the That Rendang Lady brand, which she sells from her base in Bristol. So let's bring Zaleha open on. Let's have a look. I just want to make sure. Here we go. Hey, Zaleha. Hi, <laughs> I forgot to mention Zaleha's with her daughter Sophia. Hey, Sophia. Hi. Please tell me this is the first time you've had Sophia uh, live with you. Yes. I managed and to convince her this is the first time. I've been cooking live for like two years since the lockdown. A lot of live cooking, but this is the first time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! I, I like I like I like kind of uh, collecting all these first with MOMC. So Zaleha, before I ask you about what you're cooking today, I have a very special message from the um, from our UK-based Malaysian High Commissioner, um, His Excellency Ambassador Zakri Jaffa. So let's see what he has to say, and we'll come back and talk a little bit more in two minutes. So let me remove all of us, and we'll play the welcome message. We are delighted to welcome you here virtually to our home at Belgrave Square in London to launch the official Malaysian Flavors in Europe series here in the UK. I would like firstly to thank the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industries and Masters of Malaysian Cuisine as well as Tourism Malaysia and Madrid for jointly organizing this Malaysian Flavors in Europe series. And through this program, more people will be able to get to know some of the quintessential Malaysian ingredients and tropical fruits that are available here in Europe. The UK is synonymous with gastronomy and travel, and increasingly it is the case that the two go hand in hand. Through expanding awareness around Malaysian cuisine, we hope to increase the appetite for Malaysian travellers in the future. We are finding new ways to introduce small tastes of Malaysia to people right here in the UK. Malaysian food products carry their own uniqueness when it comes to gastronomy. The distinctive flavors that emerge from Malaysian cooking are, in my bias opinion, the best Southeast Asia has to offer. Decades of cross-cultural integration has created cuisine that's one of a kind, and some might say Malaysian food is the very epitome of fusion. In addition to inspiring travelers here in the UK, there is also a vast opportunity for local Malaysian restaurants and supermarkets to further explore and introduce more Malaysian ingredients to satisfy the demand from the Asian and local community. We hope that programs like Malaysian Flavors in Europe will act as an eye-opener to everyone to further explore Malaysian ingredients and especially our very own tropical foods. Before handing over to Jackie, who can tell you more about the series, I would like to wish all Malaysians Selamat Hari Merdeka and Selamat Hari Malaysia. Thank you and enjoy the show. Okay, that's fantastic. Let's bring Zaleha back on. Hey, Zaleha and Sophia. Okay, tell us, first of all, where in the UK are you based? Okay, we are based in Bristol, southwest part of the country. We're very close to Wales, so we're quite strategic and the uh, um, really good demographic here when it comes to food. 
Okay, okay. I, yeah. I, I actually, for those who don't know, I actually lived in the UK for two years, um, yeah. and uh, this was a long time ago. So I'd imagine the landscape when it comes to Malaysian ingredients might have improved significantly since oh, yeah. the oh, yeah. late 90s. <laughs> okay, yeah. so um, now I want to give a quick shout out to where you can shop online in the UK. So um, MalaysianFoodSupermarket.uk um, is uh, a place where you can uh, actually order online. Is that right, Zaleha? Yes, you can get online from MalaysianFoodSupermarket.uk. They sell, they will deliver everywhere in UK. But if you're based in Bristol, you can get them in Wai Hong. Um, it's a huge uh, oriental supermarket that belongs to a Malaysian. So it's a good support system as well for us as a Malaysian here. Oh, lovely, lovely. Okay, so tell us, now we're talking about uh, combining Malaysian ingredients and Malaysian tropical fruits. So mm -hmm. what uh, Malaysian ingredients are you featuring in your cooking today and what tropical fruit are you using? Okay, for my main course, we are making uh, fish cakes, which is uh, one of the British favourites, yeah? So instead of doing the traditional fish cake, I just add, as you say, a touch of Malaysian in there with some curry powder. Everybody loves curry, so a little bit of curry powder in there will make it better and I also will be making some um, dip to go with it so it's going to be my sambal mayo instead of just mayonnaise or ketchup so it's going to be sambal mayo goes in there to serve it with the fish cakes later Fantastic. and for Sophia decided to make durian blonde. why did you choose durian? Um, I think that the flavour of the durian compared to other Malaysian fruits is very strong so i think that paired with the blondie flavor would have matched well i think <laughs> fantastic okay now uh, now before we play your pre-recorded cooking segment i have a very special message from the ambassador of this series chef Dato ismail <laughs> chef ismail for those of you who uh, not familiar with him. Chef Ismail is a household name in Malaysia and in many parts of Europe because he used to travel every year to Europe to promote Malaysian cuisine. So he's the perfect ambassador for us. Chef Ismail is also the owner and head chef of the very, very highly regarded restaurant Rebung in Kuala Lumpur. If ever you travel to Malaysia, you have to visit restaurant Rebung. I have never heard a single bad word said about his restaurant. I have to admit, I, that's coming from someone like me who used to own a restaurant, so I know the landscape a little bit, you know. Okay, so let me just um, bring Chef Ismail on. Hello, Chef. Hi. Hi, how are you? Do you know I was late? I was having my nap and I, and, and Harley said, Please, you should be on live already. I said, okay, okay, okay. Hello, British lady. Hi, how Chef. Are you? <laughs> Welcome again in this beautiful, exotic, energized series of uh, upper two, uh, all the way from uh, Bristol, is it? Yes. Yeah, Zaleha. Originally, where are you from, Zaleha? I wonder. I'm, I'm from Pahang. Oh, Pahang kat mana? Where? Kuantan. Oh, Kuantan. Jalan apa tu? Uh, I grew up in Bukit Sekilau. <laughs> ah, okay. Dekat stadium. It's very close to the oh, stadium. Oh, okay. We had quite similar dishes lah. Orang, orang, orang Pahang and orang Negeri Sembilan. Yes. Gula lemak maman, is it? Uh, yes, we do lemak maman, yes. That's but right. Pahang okay. Here. All right. Anyway, uh, uh, we had beautiful chef already, like Rosita, Lisa, and Bella, and uh, Elias, and then Mazna, right, uh, Jackie? Yeah, we've had a fantastic. Yes. Had, this is the rendang lady. The rendang lady is going to show her how to make fish cake today. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Good luck, Zareha. Good luck, and your sweetie lady girls next to you. <laughs> All the way. Okay, you people you, are the best. <laughs> Thank Bye. you so much. <laughs> See you soon. Okay. Bye. Okay. So Zaleha, you're yes. making uh, fish cakes, and Sophia is going to be making durian blondie. Uh, yeah. What are some uh, What are some highlights we can look forward to in your segment? Oh, the dip is the best, isn't it? And the durian cream that Sophia made. Oh, heaven. <laughs> Oh, yeah, anything, anything creamy, anything durian works for me. And yeah. um, did, did uh, Sophia, did you try the fish cakes? And don't tell us what you thought of it and the durian blondie at the end. Did you try them? 
Okay, okay. Guys, stick around to find out what she thought of them, okay? Because Sophia, did you grow up in the UK primarily or? Um, no, I... Well, let me know what you want. Uh, I was born in Australia. And, oh! And then I grew up in Qatar and South Korea. Okay, okay, okay. Very cool. Okay, excellent. So let's play the uh, video now. Uh, guys, for... Uh, if you have any questions at all, make sure you post them in the comments. We're going to bring Zaleha and Sophia back at the end to answer the questions live on air, okay? And if you want the recipe to this and to all our sessions, make sure you sign up at malaysianchefs.com slash mafi. And okay, let's roll the tape and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Thanks, Zaleha. Yeah, thanks, thanks, My name is Zaleha and this is my daughter Sophia and today we are working with uh, the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industries Malaysia, MAFI, into bringing uh, Malaysian flavours in Europe. So uh, basically we are cooking something European and putting in a little bit of Malaysian flavour in it. So my daughter is going to make the dessert today and I'll be making the main course. So we are going to start with our dessert, which is durian blondie. And durian is actually a tropical fruit from Malaysia. It's available uh, in every Asian stores, or oriental stores in, in Bristol or in the UK, in London as well. Um, besides that, you can get jackfruit, you could get rambutan, you get mangosteen, and you also could get longan once in a while if you're lucky. So without further ado, we are going to start with durian blondie and once we finish with the durian blondie we're going to go into making some fish cakes let's start hi Sophia <laughs> so what are you making today <laughs> I, I mentioned that just now so what are you going to make um, today <clears throat> durian blondie durian blondie why are you making durian blondie what's the difference durian blondie and brownies isn't it we're used to brownies um, brownies use cocoa powder yeah and uh, blondies use Melted uh, hot brown butter. Brown butter? Mm. So you're going to show us how to make brown butter? Yes. Okay, <laughs> shall we start? Hmm? Here you go. Uh, do you need my help? Let me know. I'll, I'll help you. What do you need to do? What's that? Turn it on. Turn it on. Okie dokie. Okay, so first you yeah. need to heat half a cup of butter. Uh huh. And in a so this is you browning the butter, the process of browning the butter. Yeah. Okay. Right. It will take a while, isn't it? How long will it take, you think? So, you know it's brown mm -hmm. when it's brown and it smells... <laughs> <laughs> you know it's brown when it's brown, that's good. Okay. And it smells... Uh, caramel? It smells nice. It smells nice. Like, like is that like caramelised butter? Mm. Yeah? Yes. Okay. That sounds good. So, we're waiting for the butter to melt and... Brown. Do you want to show the other ingredients to everybody, to all the audience that are watching us today? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you want me to help you with that? Mm. Yeah? Okay. Okay, I'm going to help so you with that one. We have uh, one and a half cups of flour. Uh -huh. We have one cup of brown sugar. Mm -hmm. We mix light brown and dark brown. Okay. We have two eggs. Okay. We have half, 100 grams of durian. Mm -hmm. We have white chocolate chips and hazelnuts for the topping. We have vanilla extract, one teaspoon. Mm -hmm. We have baking soda. Okay. Baking powder. Baking powder. Baking powder. Baking powder. powder. Okay. okay. And salt. Salt. <coughs> That's it. Oh, and condensed milk and double cream for the cream. Oh, you're making the cream as well. Mm. So, if for example, people doesn't like nuts. In it, do you is it an optional or you still have to put it in? No, the nuts and the chocolate chips are for putting on top, which is optional. Optional. Oh, on top, you don't fold it together. No. Mm -hmm. well, okay. The chocolate chips, you can fold it. In. Okay, but you still can also drizzle it on top and bake it. Yes. Okay, okay. So, oh, this is a bit strong. Is that okay now? Switch. Okay. Right. Switch. Okay, I'm gonna let you continue. So, what are you going to do after this? After this, um, we are going to mm -hmm. mix the butter and sugar mm -hmm. together in here. So you don't have to beat it, just mm -hmm. whisk. Just whisk. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, it smells really nice actually. 
once it's done, it's going to go into this bowl for you to whisk it with the sugar. Whisk it with the sugar, okay. You have got the oven on, mm -hmm. all prepped, okay. Oh, look at that, it's brown. Look, it is, I think it's, yeah? Yes. Right, it's done. Let me see. Ooh, it smells really good actually. It, it's like, it's not burnt, it's like, it's caramelized. Do you know how to explain that? Do you want to pour it in there, do you? Ah, is it brown or burnt? Burnt. Is it? <laughs> no, it's brown. So that is the butter. <laughs> Daddy's looking and not sure what Daddy thinks. So that's it. I think you can see from the top view that this is the butter. It actually smells caramelized. Right, now what are you going to do, so? I'm going to fold up my sleeves first. Right, fold your sleeves. You alright? <laughs> right, now the sugar goes in. I'll be watching you do that. Sugar goes in. And we're going to mix it. Mm -hmm. going to do after this and then after you're going to add the vanilla extract uh -huh. the eggs and the durian do you have to wait for it to cool off or you can do it all straight away now you don't have to wait for either um, right all done is there any lumps no okay but the sugar is, is it not melt is fine is it like that so. yeah okay and now what are we making what are we going to do after this? So now we're going to add the vanilla mm -hmm. extract. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to crack two eggs. Okay. Oopsie. Move this away. And three. Uh, you going to whisk that first or? Yeah, I think I will. Yeah, do. okay. So, can you use white sugar instead of dark sugar, dark brown sugar, or light brown sugar? Yes. Uh, can you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We, uh, we use dark brown and light brown because it's healthier. Is it? Then the white sugar. <laughs> yes. Okay. Fair enough. So, durian goes in first, or the flour goes in? Durian. There you go. Can you put more durian if you like? Yes. Yeah. We, um, my dad and I don't eat too much durian. durian. So it's going to be really mildly yeah. durian flavoured in there. Okay. Oh, it looks good. What are you going to put in now? So now we put in the flour. flour. Uh -huh. sift it first? No, we sift it already. Okay. So you put in sifted flour. Sifted flour. Uh huh. Baking powder. Baking powder. And, and salt. Some salt. salt. How much salt is that? Half teaspoon? Yes. Yeah, okay. Just one teaspoon. Okay. So you're going to fold it or whisk it? <clears throat> Mix. Mix it, okay? Mix until just blend it with very few flour lumps, okay? So we've mixed it until you can still see a few flour lumps. Uh huh, and then? And now we're going to add the white chocolate. Okay. I think we'll just mix it in. You're going to mix it in? Woof! Okay. White chocolate's gone in. What else is going in now? All done? I've got the tin prepared for Sophia. You don't need to butter it or nothing. You just put, it, uh, you just put a greaseproof paper on and Sophia is going to pour them in. Come on in. Do you need help? There you go. Can people see what you're doing? Okay. These are hazelnuts. Okay, is it toasted? Yes. But can you use other nuts besides hazelnuts, like pecans or um, walnuts? Yeah. You can? I guess so. Why do you use hazelnut? Because they're nicer. Okay. I prefer hazelnuts. You prefer hazelnuts, okay. Looks good. Okay, so this is 
This is Sophia's durian blondie. So it's going to go into the oven. And for how long? 30 minutes. Yes. 40, 30, 40? 35. 35 minutes on? On 180. 180. The durian blondie is now in the oven. Um, later, Sophia will show us how to make the, the durian cream to go on top. This is actually optional, is it? Yes. Yeah? You decided to do this for mummy, is it? Yes. For an extra durian. So Sophia decided to make this durian cream for me for extra durian flavor. You cannot, you don't have to put the durian cream on top. You can eat it as it is with the drizzle of chocolate sauce and that's fine. Um, but she will show you this later. While we're waiting for the brownies to cook, we are going to start with the main course. It's now my turn to do the main dish and I have chosen to do fish cakes because simply because fish cakes are our family favorite. And also you could um, improvise and use a lot of things, ingredients, vegetable wise, you could swap around and do things with fish cakes. So uh, I'm going to use few Malaysian ingredients in my fish cakes later on, but I'll still maintain the traditional method of making fish cakes. For today's fish cakes, I am going to use cod and smoked haddock, simply because we love cod and at the same time, my children, Sophia especially, love uh, the smoky flavour in um, smoked fish. So I chose smoked haddocks, especially for you. Thank you. I have to poach the fish and to infuse the flavour for the fish, I am using lemongrass, one onion and some milk. So we will begin with poaching the fish, but we have to infuse the milk first before we uh, put the fish in and start with everything else. Also, I have to let you know that I have actually boiled, I have actually boiled the potatoes with some salt and this is what you want, slightly dry potatoes because if you do, um, if you boil the potatoes and do your fish cake straight away, it will be a bit mushy. You want dry potatoes like that. So it will keep the shape of the fish cakes. You don't want, uh, you don't want hot, mushy potatoes it, it will not work that way this is just from experience that i've made fish cakes before so you want pre-boil put it in the fridge you can do that or you could just leave it on the tabletop you just want it to be dry like that you could see some dry bits on there okay can you see it's boiling nicely that's when the fish goes in there you go two three and four we're going to leave that to poach nicely and then i'm going to show you the rest of the ingredients that we're going to use in our fish cakes today we have shallots about um quarter cup of finely chopped shallots you also need um two cloves of garlic about one and a half tablespoon also minced or finely chopped you also need ginger you will need, um, this is uh, Chinese coriander, but if you don't have Chinese coriander, you can also use the normal coriander or you can use um, celery leaves as well or parsley. Parsley works well as well. So if you don't have it, don't worry, just do something, use other leaves. And I've got some chopped spring onions and some chilies. In my recipe, I have put in um, either one whole red chilies or four bird eye chilies. I'm using normal chilies today simply because you won't take too spicy, yeah? And we also need curry powder. This, I'm using Baba's curry powder, which is Malaysian. That one. It's available in every oriental store in Bristol and also in London. You can get this also from Malaysian Supermarket UK, which is where I bought most of my stuff as well. You, they deliver everywhere in the UK. Ah, last one. Uh, this is a uh, grated lemon zest. You will need this. I like it, but if you don't want to have a little bit of lemony flavor in your fish cakes, it's fine. You can leave it out. You will also need some corn. This is corn from sweet corn, canned sweet corn. Just about half cup of it. And that's it. That's all you need for the ingredients. The rest, I'll show you the rest of the ingredients for coating and later on, yeah? But I'm going to just check the fish. Oh, it smells really good. 
Right, the reason why I use lemongrass is just to infuse a little bit of Malaysian flavor in there. If you don't want to use lemongrass, you can always use cloves or you could just leave it just with onion or you can also actually put in dill or chives. Chives would be good with fish. But because this is a little bit of, because the theme we have here is actually bringing Malaysian flavours into Europe. So that's why I'm bringing a little bit of lemongrass, a little bit of Baba's curry powder in there. And later on, I'm going to use a uh, summer sauce to make the dip. Right. This is done. Sophia will be helping me to make the fish cakes. And uh, we're waiting for the fish to cool up a little bit. So you're going to start with that, Sophia? Do you want to start while mashing the potatoes? Put them in there, yeah. Put them in the bowl and mash it. You don't have to mash it into puree or fine mash. You just coarsely mash them and we'll add it in the fish. Now, I'm going to just put it in. Smells good. Is it? Look at the flakes, look at them, that's what we need. You don't want to use a machine, just hand mash that waist. Perfect. You okay? Can you help? Right, I'm going to, okay, I just think it out that. We are going to mash this to into a coarse mixture before we add in the rest of the ingredients. Right, look at the texture. You can see from top as well that that is the texture that we want you can still see a bit of lumps from the potatoes there. and we're going to add in the rest of the ingredients now the shallots shallots go in and garlic ginger chilies This is um, Chinese coriander. This is spring onions, goes in. Um, the, the lemon rind goes in. Curry powder. It's entirely up to you how much you want to put in. I have two tablespoons here, but I'm going to put in maybe one tablespoon first. See how it works if it's not too. Not enough flavour in there, then I'll add in more and the corn goes in. Really easy. There you go, soft. Do you want to stir that for mommy? Right. Mix it all together until it's uniform, until everything mixed through and you see a nice lump before we make it into nice patties. But I have also another ingredient here that I'm going to show you. I'm going to put in as a filling, but it's entirely uh, optional as well. Yes. Let me have a look if it's mixed enough. Oh, we forgot salt. <laughs> we need to put some salt. Can you squeeze take some salt for mommy? Salt. Don't forget salt and pepper. Although when we boiled the potatoes just now, I did put in some salt, but you still need salt in, in this whole ingredient. So I'm just going to mix it. Properly. So it's actually good. I have few a little bit lumps of potatoes in there, but it's perfectly fine. Don't worry about it. You don't want it to be too mushy. Everything in here is actually cooked, except obviously except the the onions, garlic. So that's it. This is what you want. So now I'm going to take a little bit in my hands, like that. I'm going to just put a small hole there. Dent, actually, yeah? A little dent there. And I'm going to add in cheese. Simple cheese there. Push it down and get a little bit more. Just put on top there to cover it. Yes. Um, yeah. While I'm doing this, Sophia is going to beat the eggs that we're going to use to coat these fish cakes and fry them shortly. There you go. This is what 
we want. So the cheese is actually entirely up to you. It's optional. You can use mozzarella, you can use goat's cheese or any cheese you prefer. There you go. This is how you do that. And take a little bit more and just put it on top so it covers the whole cheese. Form it nicely into this nice patty. Press it a little bit. There you go. I'm going to do a few more. And then we're going to, we're going to show you how to fry them. Um, it's done. I have made the patties. So based on the recipe, I got about seven here. But you can use, you can make smaller fish cakes or you can make really big, gigantic fish cakes. It doesn't really matter. Before we fry the fish cakes, you need some flour, some eggs and some breadcrumbs to roll it in before we put it into the hot oil. It's going to be shallow fried. Roll it in the flour and then into the eggs and into the breadcrumbs and pass it to mommy. We're going to put it in the hot oil, yeah? The heat should be like medium. Okay. Medium heat, yeah. Go in there. Uh -huh. What? <laughs> right. Yeah, make sure you go around, lift it, yep. And make sure on the side as well, you put on the side. Yeah, there you go. Right. You can opt not to do this process altogether and go straight into the pot and fry them like that, like we Malaysians. Our fish in Malaysia are usually cooked that way. No, yeah, no flour, eggs and breadcrumbs. So I'm just going to gently put them in there. Oops. Sleeves. Ready? Yeah. So that's the second one we put in. And later I'm going to show you another one that we're not going to roll it in and just plain uh, fish cakes. So these other three, I will fry them plain without the breadcrumbs. <laughs> four, my husband just corrected me. There's another four here that I'm going to fry them plain without the breadcrumbs and we will see the difference uh, between those two fish cakes. Beautiful, the colour is gorgeous. I think it tastes good. Oh, look at that. That's a bit of coal there. It's leaking. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about that. <laughs> we have a bit of a leak going on here. So let's see. We'll fry this and then we'll, I'll show you how to make a simple dipping sauce. We'll serve it with some salad, some tomatoes, and that's it. That's the fish cakes. Super, super easy. So I'm going to put it in there, my plate. Yeah, it works. So this is how we Malaysians usually eat our fish cakes. We don't coat them in flour, egg and breadcrumbs. It's just goes in there just as it is, like that. So this is the fish cakes without the breadcrumbs. Fish cakes done. The last bit of the fish cake making, I am going to show you how to make a simple dip using my own range of um, spice paste. It's called That Rendang Lady Sambal Paste. I've been selling this in the UK for quite a while and I already sent it to Amsterdam as well and it survived the postage. Uh, so if anyone wants to try and make this, you need this sambal paste. I know I'm cheeky. Come on yeah, mm -hmm. she's gonna mix it in. Mm -hmm. That's mayonnaise. You can use any type of mayonnaise, no problem. If you can't find my sambal, you can use any sambal, sambal olet that's been sold in local supermarket is available as well. So you can use any kind of sambal actually. Um, sweet chili sauce, any sweet chili sauce will do. Go in. I'm a first <laughs> Or if you prefer, you could. If you prefer, you could also use Lingups, which is another Malaysian range. This is our family favourite. Put one teaspoon, another teaspoon. Just going to stir it and see. Then we'll taste it and see if, if everything is good. And we usually eat that with the fish cakes and some salad on side as well with some, uh, some uh, tomato, fresh tomatoes. And that's it. Actually, it's really super, super easy to do.
They're really good. Right, that is super simple, easy mayonnaise, um, mayonnaise, sweet chili sauce, and a little bit of my about two teaspoon of my sambal, <coughs> sambal that renowned lady sambal paste, and that's it. So fish cakes are done. I'm just going to put it in a plate. Mr. Allpin to come and try them. Come on, subs. Put your artistic cap on. <laughs> going to put one of the fish cakes here, put a little bit of sauce there, for Mr. Alpin to try, okay, is that it? Mr. Alpin, come, oh, I was mm. right, try that. Hi folks. A little bit of Malaysia in your British fish cakes. Let me know what you think. So that, yeah. <laughs> Sit down here. Okay. Hey, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, so, Sarah, uh, uh, you. Uh, no, 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 you have your own. Let's, let's try as well. supermarket.co.uk uh, or Wai Home in Bristol. Both do home delivery as well. You could order online. We'll put in on the website as well um, where, the, where you could get all these ingredients and the fruits as well. They do the fruits. Um, you can also get the fruits from Malaysian Supermarket UK. They do durians and jackfruit especially because I bought from them before. Be back shortly to finish off the durian blondie. But unfortunately, Mr. Alpin is not keen to try them, but Sophia will, don't you? So the last bit of our cooking today, and Sophia is going to show us her brownie, no, her blondie. And she is also going to show us how to make the durian cream uh, to go on top or just to slab it on top if you like. If not, you can always eat it as it is. Go on, eh? So this is the brownie. The brownie. The blondie. The blondie. <laughs> so this is the blondie, apparently. Okay. Um, it's not too blonde, but why do you think it's a bit brown? I think it's because of the brown sugar. Okay, cool. I think if you use white sugar, mm -hmm. or if you made the butter a little bit less brown, okay, it would have right. been. But it's still good. It, it comes still. out really nice and perfect. So, and it smells durian. Mm. It smells good. It smells like a nice, nice durian blondie. Yeah. Right. Do you want to take okay. it off and put it on there? Do you want me to help you? Okay. Yeah. Here you go. So, not sticking to the edges. Nice. So we are going to leave it like that for now, yeah? Uh -huh. Ooh, nice. Yeah. That's the durian blondie. And Sophia is going to, you're going to show us to make, how to make the cream. There you go. So you need, that is not good. Do you need, that's what, half cup? Yeah. Okay. A little cream. Do you need to beat the double cream first, do you? All of it? I don't know. It's up to you. Do you want a lot of cream? Yeah, I like a lot of cream. Yeah, thank you. 
So you're going to whisk it until it's like thick. Ah, okay. That was quick. quick. <laughs> so you whisk the cream until it's thick before you add in the condensed milk. Mm -hmm. All of the... How much is that condensed milk? Condensed milk is also half a cup. Half a cup? Okay. Half a cup then. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Four tablespoons. Four, four tablespoons of four tablespoons of condensed milk goes in there. Shall I keep whisking? Yeah. And then? And then you add durian. So durian puree. As much as you like. Whatever you have, throw it in. Is it? <laughs> right, that's the durian puree. Oh, smells so good. Right, we... Uh, Sophia is going to keep whisking the durian cream, is it? Durian cream and first she beat the double cream till it's slightly uh, thick and then she added in condensed milk and finally the durian went in and now she's just whisking it all together to make it into a nice smooth durian cream. So our ending footage went missing. We have no clue what happened, so here it is the final product of Sophia's Durian Blondie. Thank goodness we have some left over from yesterday, so if not we have to make it all over again, isn't it? What do you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't mind. You don't mind making it again? You sure? Mm -hmm. Okay, she doesn't mind making it again. Yeah, okay. So, the Blondie. It's actually so much nicer the day after. It's very, it's, the texture is slightly different to the brownies and the flavours are so rich, especially the best bit here. The durian cream. Why? Wow. Okay, it's because Sophia made it. So, since Sophia put it in the fridge, isn't it? See, your cream is strong. It's become like ice cream. Is it? It's, a bit, it's become harder. It becomes harder, so it's good. I'm going to try a piece of the brownie and then Sophia will try as well. One? No? Yeah? Yes. Okay, I'm going to cut into smaller piece. I'm going to have Durian cream on top. It has to be a lot. Can't be too little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good. You nailed it. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> That's all I can say. They're slightly dense, but at the same time, they're so soft and the flavour from the durian, there are some bits of the durian in there that is like, you bite into it and you get it. And this durian cream, this durian cream is definitely the winner among all this <laughs> recipe for today. So, thank you, Sophia. Do you want to try some as well? Do you want to try the cream as well? No. The cream is definitely for me, the durian blondie. Sophia likes it. I love it. That's all from me and my family here in Bristol. You can get all the recipes that I made today and much more by signing up to our link below. A big thank you to Marty for working with, uh, with us and we hope to introduce more Malaysian flavours to Europe. But till then, goodbye from the Altins in Bristol. Bye! <laughs>Okay, great. Let's bring Zaleha and Sophia back on the, uh, the screen. Hey guys, that looks really Thank delicious. You. So many people are saying are really keen to try that. And you know what? When you mm -hmm. mentioned originally that you wanted to make blondie, I didn't know what blondie were either. <laughs> like, I'm glad you actually explained. It's kind of like it's like brownie except it's blonde, right? Because it yeah. doesn't have the yeah. Yeah. thing. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So for anyone who has never heard of the term blondie, I don't know, is it a British thing? Because no, I don't really, yeah. No, no, we don't know either. No? Okay, cool, cool. So there you go. Give that a go. A go. Uh, durian, I, I love the idea with the durian cream with it as well. Mm. And a lot of people love seeing you guys together on screen. Okay, it's American mm. according to Paul. There you go. American, there you go. <laughs> And I don't know if you saw on camera, um, David, your husband David actually commented in the comments, say thanks for the fish cake. So he really liked it. <laughs> he totally enjoyed it. I think because the hint of the curry powder makes it like takes it to another level. Totally different yeah. fish cakes compared to the, yeah. the common fish cakes that we get here. 
Sure, sure. Like, um, uh, I, I, I want to get one question out of the way. Mumu Maung Dada was asking, where can we buy your sambal in London? Under what um, name? They can order uh, online from me. Not online. They can order from my Instagram page or my Facebook page, that rendang lady. Or they can message, direct message me and uh, we will... The website is still under progress at the moment. So once we have website, proper website, they can order through there. Cool, cool. So look up that rendang lady. Everybody knows that rendang lady, and we'll be able to find uh, Zaleha's details and message her for that. Um, I'm just trying to see if there any go. Yeah, like I said, lots of people love the fact that you guys were cooking together. You should do it more often. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and now, um, with the durian, um, Sophia, what did you think of the durian blondie? Uh, I, <laughs> what do you think? Um, it was good, I think. Yeah, I, cool. Because it wasn't strong. It wasn't too strong. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. too strong for her. I love it, especially with lots of toast cream on top. Heaven. I didn't eat dinner that night. I just ate durian blondie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is turning into a family affair. Ayman, your other daughter, says, better make some for me when I'm back home. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now um, the uh, let me bring Chef Ismail back on, our ambassador, and let's hear what he has to say about this session. Hi, Chef. Hi, wow, congratulations to both of you, princess from, from Pekan, yeah, doing the beautiful, uh, I love the fish cake, it, it, it really like, uh, like, uh, apa tu, uh, apa benda tu Zaleha, uh, macam uh, pegedil ikan, yeah? Yeah, betul lah. Uh. Yeah, it's like pegedil ikan, that's right, the only thing that we don't have the bread crumb, yeah? That's right, yeah. But, uh, it's really superb your menu today and and you both are good teachers you know you go like very systematically doing things like i'm so impressed oh. and, uh, and 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 i i i really like but the only thing that if i'm back in malaysia i couldn't get the fish that you do so mm -hmm. what would you advise me to use the fish in kl in malaysia in malaysia go for spanish mackerel tenggiri ataupun uh, yeah spanish mackerel actually is the best Ah, okay, okay, huh. because the codfish price here killing us, so I can't afford to use codfish. Yeah. Um, you can also use salmon, Dato. Salmon is good as well. Ah, okay, that's nice. Mm. But we can get a lot of cheeses here also, no problem. Mm. Well, I'm going to do that. Nice. I like something. I like fish. I'm the animal lovers, actually. I, I don't really take meat, and but fish, shrimp, and other things I like to eat. Yeah. And for those who doesn't eat fishes, they can do with legume, yeah? Vegetables. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. For vegan and, and vegetarian. Exactly. Jackie, Jackie is vegetarian. <laughs> we are all seafood, we are all seafood lovers. Ah, so yeah, all the way. Ah, so good luck, and you did the best for Amafi uh, and Malaysian uh, people who are watching it. Thank you so Thank you. much, uh, uh, Mom and uh, uh, Zaleha and Sophia. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Sophia. Thank Thanks, you. Chef. Yeah, we have to get you. Thank you. We have yeah, to get yeah. you to the UK, yeah, when the lockdown is over. That's mm -hmm. right. You got to go and eat apa tu? Pegedil ikan zaleha. Bye. 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 All right, guys. Um, yeah, that was another fabulous, very, very informative session. Again, don't forget, if you want Zaleha's recipe and Sophia's recipe, you need to sign up, malaysianchefs.com slash mafi, M-A-F-O. I and we will send you all the recipes soon and we will also send you a special edition e-magazine that's going to accompany this series uh, soon after once I've found some time to put it all together. Um, so yeah, don't forget guys, uh, the other thing I want to mention also, Zaleha's good friend Marco D is going to be releasing a video, we will release a video of Marco D attempting the durian blondie so mark a british guy based in malaysia not a fan of durian usually but let's see what his response is when he attempts to make durian blondie guys so make sure you guys follow our facebook page we're going to release his video two days from today but uh shortly after this session later on today 
we are releasing a separate video from Marco D where he attempts the lasagna you guys caught in session two by Elias Mohammed. Elias made lasagna with curry flavors. Mark is going to respond. It's inspired him to also make lasagna, but with rendang flavor. Okay, so that's coming out on our channel very, very shortly, just like in an hour or two. Okay, um, thanks again so much, Saleha. And Thank we you. look forward to seeing you guys again. We want to see more of you guys cook together. Okay, and we have a whole bunch of. <laughs> I forgot to acknowledge everyone who commented. Thank you, everyone. You guys are wonderful. We have a very, very loyal group of supporters. Uh, obviously, our own group of chefs, uh, Chef Johari Edrus, our Master Chef Judge, uh, MOMC Chef, and also Debbie Teo and Bob Adnin. Everyone was online. Rose Richards just said hello. Um, a bunch of people who said hello who are always very loyal. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Hamima said hello earlier. And um, again, guys, uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow for our final session. We are going back to Germany, okay? So RSVP by going to bit.ly slash myflavors5, the number five, and we'll see you same time tomorrow. Thanks, Zaleha. Thanks, Sophia. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Bye. 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 Let's just put this on. Remember